This Youth Update is brought to you by... It's gonna be a big blue summer. The Big Blue Summer Celebration with Flow is here. Make yours unforgettable. Sign up for big bundle savings. Build your essential bundle and save big money. Blow out the candles on Barbados' 50th and Flo's first Big Blue Birthday Celebration to win big prizes including $10,000 in cash. Big time sports coverage at home or on the go with Flo TV like the Olympic Games in Rio and the new home of Premier League football. Watch it all with big data and big style on the fastest 4G network. The world's biggest sporting events this summer are all on Flo. The Big Blue Summer Celebration is here, and Flow is your official partner. This is how we flow. It's gonna be a Big Blue Summer. Get ready to go. This is how we flow. We wear the ribbly blue for the summer. Get ready to go. This is how we flow. This is the Barbados Today Evening News Update for Friday, July 22nd. Thank you for joining us. I am Marie Claire Williams. The Barbados Workers' Union is warning the government to pay the compensation awarded to retrenched workers of the National Conservation Commission without any unnecessary delays. This afternoon, the union met with their members who were sent home from the NCC to discuss the matter. The talks came one week after the Employment Rights Tribunal ruled that the employees were unfairly dismissed and should be paid 52 weeks' wages in compensation. Barbados Today's Emmanuel Joseph was at the meeting and has this report. Speaking to reporters minutes after meeting with the employees at Solidarity House to review uh, the compensation awarded by the Employment Rights Tribunal, General Secretary of the BWU, Tony Moore, said the union was not willing to wait any more than a week for payment to be made. She said considering that the Ministry of Finance has all the necessary information regarding the 52 week wages awarded, the compensation must be honored like yesterday to avoid any further fallout. She will not be drawn into if industrial action will be taken if the delay goes on indefinitely. More also insisted that the pay must be given in one lump sum stating that the mood of the meeting today was one of anger, frustration and disappointment. The union boss said the discussions with the NCC was not re required since the amount was already known and the only questions were when and the time frame for payment. From Solidarity House, Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. The man charged with making it easier to do business in Barbados is telling the private sector that he will not be operating as a watchdog or complaints body. Senator Darcy Boyce was addressing the Barbados International Business Association's members at a Let's Talk Business facilitation seminar at the Hilton Resorts today. Neither will this rule be done as a watchdog or a complaint body. Sufficient complaint mechanisms exist to the existing private sector associations, to the social partnership, the free trade commission, and all the different appeal bodies we have with actually various functions. With sufficient, however, with sufficient background information, I can and will assist in bringing cases to the front of the queue for my fellow ministers and colleagues in the public sector to, to address. I, however, will not be keeping a serious log for constant issue. Boyce says he will not be able to make final and binding decisions on certain matters, but he promised that over the next six months he will seek to be an active intermediary between the public and private sectors. We do not intend to create a new department called Business Facilitation in Prime Minister's office. My role is to act to clear blockages when they arise and to let the system try to deal with these matters on its own and to improve it sufficiently that it does so. Finally, my office will not act as a tribunal or arbitrator. I will not and I cannot make binding final decisions on outstanding cases unless such cases pertain to my added duty. For example, in immigration or telecommunications or energy or investment. 
With an increase in mobile phone penetration, the use of the over 700 phone booths across the island has fallen dramatically over the past few years. However, telecoms company Flo says it has no immediate plans of getting rid of them. Managing Director Niall Sheehy says the payphones are now more of a social responsibility. A lot of them aren't in use, so what we've done is we've looked at the ones that are in use. And there's certain areas where you still see a lot of traffic. So, for example, down by the hospital, um, down by the courthouse new police stations for some reason. There are, are certain uh, areas where you don't really see the usage. I mean, uh, there are other areas like, uh, we have a lot of hotel, hotels, I don't do, in a lot, certainly, you know, I was in the airport recently with my son and uh, he sat down in one of the booths inside the airport and he asked me, what's this? He'd, you know, he's six, he'd never seen a pay phone, you know? So, okay. it's, you know, so the culture is changing yeah. and I think, um, you know, we see, Mobile phone penetration is 110, 120 percent. So, you know, the the so the usage of payphones has gone down. But there are still some people who want it. And what we've identified is the key ones. And actual fact, what we're doing is we're swapping out the those payphones, and we're putting in a hybrid type of payphone that uh, will allow you to make phone calls. But it's also going to allow you to tap up. Final preparations are being made for Soka Royal this weekend at Bushy Park in St. Philip. It will feature the Party Monarch and Sweet Soka competitions. Eight artists will compete in each show. Barbados today caught up with one of the technicians setting up the stage. Jamal Payne says patrons can look forward to a spectacular event on Sunday. This is the fourth year, fourth year that we are doing Soka Royal here at Bushy Park. We did it the first year, and then it went back to back. And then only last year is when we took a little break, I will say, and IGM did it. But we are back here again. We are bringing something new, as you can see behind me. We have um, an LED curtain. We should be displaying some logos, all right? Um, we also have some moving bars, which will give you that different effects, but I will leave it to you guys, the night of the show, to see the effects, all right? Trust me, it's going to be extraordinary, extraordinary lights going on here at Bushy Park. There's regional and international news after this short break. The ultimate adventure begins at Courts. For every $100 spent, you get a chance to win a trip for four to Universal Studios, a Samsung 55-inch curved TV, or one of five S7 handsets. Plus, buy any Samsung TV for a chance to win a 65-inch curved TV. Purchase one of our featured audio systems for a chance to win a PlayStation 4, or your purchase free. Shop with Ready Finance and pay nothing down for 30 days. Join the adventure only at Courts. Bringing value home. On the biggest Sunday in Soka, we bring to you the Battle of the MQR 98.1 Soka Royale. Starting from 3 p.m. with the 98.1 DJ Kirk Brown, Versi, and India, and the Monarchs of the Mass as we pay tribute to Lil Ray, Mikey, Edwin, Blah, and RBB with live performances from Griner, Gabby, Rasiley, the Bashman Soka King, Sniffy, and more. History will be made as 2015 Sweet Soka Monarch Edwin Yearwood awaits all challenges from Adrian Clark, Biggie Irie, Joaquin, Marve, Mikey, Mr. Deal, Nikita, and Peter Rand. Then it's Party Monarch time as Edwin Yearwood, I Wag, Lead Pipe and Saddis, Lil Rick, Mikey, Mr. Deal, Mr. Blum, and TC. Challenge 2015 Party Monarch Peter Ram for the throne. Advance tickets $50 at the door $60 and children under $12 $20. The MQI 98.1 Soka Royale. Buy a ticket for any National Cultural Foundation event and get a chance to win a piece of land. We are back now with news from the region. Trinidad's Finance Minister Combe Imbert is questioning the amount of value-added tax unpaid by the business community. Earlier this week, the Attorney General Faris al rawi estimated $12 billion was outstanding. But Imbert says the figure may be much lower. We get more from TV6 News in Port of Spain. The finance minister said there is a VAT that owed to the state, but some figures are under dispute even those he recalled being bandied about by the Auditor General's Department and Parliament Select Committees. There are some accounting issues that are not being explained. For example, if someone is deemed to owe back taxes, but they have passed away, the, though that debt, so-called debt, is not taken off the books. 
So there are lots of, lots of debts that are not recoverable, that are continuously being counted and double counted over the period. That is how, at one point in time, I heard a fantastic figure. I think it was 40 billion or something like that in outstanding taxes. Those figures are not correct. He said in some cases, companies are listed by the Board of Inland Revenue as owing taxes even though they have gone into liquidation. When they take out all of those things, they think there are about $2 billion outside there and that we think in this amnesty we'll collect about $500 million and the other $1.5 billion we'll go after in the normal process to collect. Okay? And that's all taxes, eh? That's not just VAT. Before the finance minister put distance between himself and the AG on the matter, we spoke with the president of the Bankers Association since he was present when the AG made the $12 billion VAT debt statement. So there are certain services within the banking and financial sector that will attract VAT. I'm, I'm very confident that all banks meet those obligations on time and as scheduled. No debts owned by the banks in terms of that? I would be shocked to learn, I, but I, 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 I do not believe so. On the international scene, a major police operation is underway in the German city of Munich after nine people were killed in a shopping mall shooting. Lawmen are investigating whether a perpetrator is among the dead. Witnesses say they had seen three people with guns and police urged the public to avoid public areas. Earlier reports said the attackers were still on the run. The incident occurred at Olympia Mall in the northwestern Musak district and public transport has been suspended. Police are describing the incident as an acute terror situation. They said the first reports of a shooting came just before 6 p.m. local time. And that's news this evening. Remember, you can get more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, our email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also tune into Channel 99 on Flow TV or Mix 96.9 FM for more news. I am Marie Claire Williams. Have a good evening.